What's going on guys? I've spent 30 days with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, and uh, get into the video. Peace. First things first, Apple's whole marketing strategy behind the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max is the titanium build. Now, I'm gonna be honest, it's nice to have, just be able to say I have a titanium phone, but realistically, the weight and the feel of it is very, very similar to the 13 and the 14. I can't say it's worth upgrading just for that, but if you like to say you have a titanium phone, then that's cool. One thing that is different is gonna be the round edges. I will say that's kind of nice, but I don't use that either because I have a case on my phone 24 seven. I don't wanna drop this phone just because there has never been an issue with the edges as far as the titanium and aluminum goes in the previous models, but the glass will break and apparently it's a little bit more fragile than last year's and the 13. I know we've all seen the videos of, uh, of my strong guy just bending the phone and the glass breaking. To prevent that, I've been using the fine woven case and this is what I've been feeling the whole time. We're gonna have a whole separate video on this specifically as far as wear and tear goes after, again, 30 plus days and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, as far as the build goes, can't go wrong. Now onto the color, I have the natural titanium, obviously, as you can see. Um, this is actually my first phone that is not a dark colorway, like space gray or black. And I can't say I regret it. It's a nice colorway, it's super neutral still, so it's not like you're going all the way to white and you're gonna see a whole bunch of dirtiness on it, but it's uh, definitely lighter than black, obviously. I do like the black iPhone, I've seen it in stores and on video, and I can't lie, it's pretty solid. So if you still like black phones, the black version is still a nice option. I think it's, I'm not even gonna try the name if I'm being honest. I think it's just black, might just be black. I don't know, if we're talking about Apple, it's probably some ridiculous name. I'll just pop it up on the screen right here, but yeah. Can't go wrong with natural titanium. If you're looking to switch up from black, just like me this year, it's a solid choice. Another major feature with the iPhone 15 is gonna be that action button on the side. And I have a couple of things to say about it. I do like the idea of it, but I'm gonna be honest, the usability of having to hold it down for three seconds just gets a little bit annoying and is not as efficient as you'd think. I would like to see Apple add a version that you can click maybe two to three times and have something pop up versus the holding the button down just because I feel like I can click two or three times way faster than having a three second hold. For me, I have it set to the camera and at that point of me holding it down for three seconds, I could just go to the home screen and click the camera app. The only time it does come in clutch is when I'm trying to do something like very quick, like having the phone in my pocket already. So if I have it in my pocket, I'm already holding the button down three times. And then by the time I pull it out of the pocket, my camera's already popped up. So in that instance, it's pretty nice. But if it's already in my hand, the three seconds is just not as efficient as it could be. So Apple, if you're watching this, listen to your boy and let me know down in the comments what you guys think as well, if they should add multiple clicking, one, two, maybe three clicks to get certain apps open so we can even have different usabilities within the action button. But yeah, that's how I feel about the action button. Now let's move on to the USB-C port. This is a major upgrade. I think if you're a content creator of any sorts, like to take pictures, video, or anything like that, you have a lot of gear, and a lot of that gear uses USB-C, so this is super clutch. For me, all of my gear, other than my AirPod Maxes, are USB-C, even the new AirPod Pros that just released. Go check out that video if you haven't. The timestamp is on one of those two places. I have a whole bunch of USB-C, so having the iPhone switch to that, just for the usability factor of having so many USB-C cords and just having to run around with one cord versus having the lightning is super clutch. Now, one of the major things with this phone when it first released was the overheating issues. I personally did not go through any of that. And if you guys wanna check out the day in the life, again, it's in one of these where you can see me using the phone throughout the whole day and my experience with it throughout a day in a life. But for me, I never had overheating issues. My phone did get super warm a couple of times, the back and the front screen, but it never turned off on me because of that reason. And now I don't have that issue at all within all the new updates that they've been pushing out software wise. So I think the phone is safe and clear if you wanna purchase one. Let me know if you guys have an iPhone 15 and if you have still experienced those issues within the past month of um, October. But for me, 
it's been chilling. Now, I feel like if you are gonna have overheating issues, you might be using this to the fullest and max potential that it has within using that new A17 Bionic chip, which is, you know, playing those video games or maybe shooting in ProRes RAW 60 for a super long time. I could see how overheating can happen in that instance. That makes sense. But for me, having the A17 Bionic chip hasn't been too noticeable. You gotta keep in mind for my day to day, I'm just scrolling emails, Instagram, the new X app, not new, it was Twitter, we all know. Stuff like that, day-to-day -day stuff that everyone uses, maybe a photo here and there, a short video, but nothing too extensive. So having the chip is nice. I haven't seen a huge difference in my personal use though. Now, if you're a hardcore gamer on the phone, or like I said, shooting those super long videos, then you might have those issues. And if you do, let me know down below. Now to add on to that, Apple introduced their first ever 120 Hertz ProMotion display on an iPhone. I'm gonna be honest, I don't see a difference. Keep in mind, I'm not playing those video games. I'm not doing these things to even get that ProMotion display really active and seeing the difference between this and my iPhone 13. But it's a welcome upgrade and I can't complain about it because I feel like there is gonna be a certain point where that becomes relevant in a lot of apps. And you're basically future-proofing yourself when you do get this phone. Now again, if you're only scrolling Instagram, looking through emails, on X, YouTube, whatever the case may be, you're not really gonna see that 120 Hertz display in action, but it's nice to have. And last but not least, we have the cameras and the flash. Before we even get into the cameras, I wanted to give an honorable mention to this flash, especially on the Pro Max model. This thing is insane. It's legitimately a flashlight right now, and it comes in super clutch. Whenever you're walking at nighttime and you just need to brighten it up a little bit, I know on my 13 Pro Max, I used to put the flashlight on. Yeah, it helped out a little bit, but you know how phone flashlights are, right? They're not legitimate flashlights and they don't help too, too much. But this is almost a legitimate flashlight. I need you guys to go check this thing out. It's actually pretty, pretty bright. I'd say almost two times as bright as the 13 Pro Max that I had last year. Now onto the cameras. We have a couple of upgrades, specifically on the Pro Max. We have the 5X zoom, which is basically the equivalent to a 120 millimeters telephoto lens. So that means that we're gonna be able to zoom in five times as much and still have good quality because it's optical versus digital. Digital is just zooming in basically like you would with your fingers on a phone picture. You see like the more you zoom in, the worse the quality gets. And optical basically means that it's an actual lens within the camera. So when you zoom into that five times, there's no grain, there's no anything in perfect lighting. I can admit I was really, really excited for it. And I thought I would use it a lot more than I do right now, especially because I thought I'd be using my iPhone a lot more for content, replace a little bit for my cameras, but that just is not the case. Cameras are still the way. I have the Sony FX3 and A7 IV and a ZV-E1. So it's just like, those cameras are so good that this does come in clutch for those moments where I can't bring a camera somewhere, but for the most part, I still just use my actual camera um, to do most of my videos. For photos on the other hand, I will give it to Apple. This is super, super good and I enjoy using it a lot. Now that we have a 48 megapixel option, this makes photos a lot better and more crisp on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max model. So I like the cameras, that was a big selling feature for me and trust me, they're definitely better than the previous years, but just not better than a regular camera, obviously. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Let me know down below, are you guys gonna be picking up the iPhone 15 and are you gonna get the Max, the regular Pro or the regular the iPhone 15 and do you think it's worth upgrading from a 13 or a 14? Let me know down below in the comments. I think just do whatever you want. It's your money at the end of the day and you won't be upset to have the phone. So see you guys later. Peace.